What's good? What's good? We are back. Another live from Vietnam Friday. And of course, uh, we're going to have a special guest here soon. Just waiting for him to come on. Um, looks like my Facebook is streaming private for some reason. I switched over from StreamYard to Restream. And it, it looks like my Facebook is streaming private. I'm going to have to figure that out. It says it's streaming, though. So, uh... How's everybody doing that's tuned in? Um, see who we got on Instagram. Uh, looks like uh, Beats Yari tuned in. Toast Wit Los tuned in. Uh, Team B Care Records tuned in. Appreciate y'all. Uh, don't forget we're doing live music reviews tomorrow. That's uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time and whatnot. Um uh, okay, uh, there's our guest. Uh, we better bring on our, our guest. So our, our guest actually had a top 25 uh, Billboard record, and that single actually went gold. And one of the most memorable singles um, of my lifetime, 5 o'clock in the morning, where you going to be? Outside on the corner. Let's bring her on, nonchalant. What's going on? Hey, hey, hey. Hey. How you doing? What's good? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I can, can you hear, hear me good? Can you hear me? Awesome. Yep. So I appreciate you taking time out to uh, do Absolutely. the interview. You know, uh, big fan. Um, one of the most memorable singles, I think, of my lifetime. Uh, I think a lot of people remember that song, Five O'Clock in the Morning, where you're going to be outside you, on the Paul, corner. Thank you, Paul, for having me. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Um, let's start with the name Nashalant. Was that your first rap name that you came um, up with? I actually didn't come up with the name. The name was given to me and it was, it was, it was okay. my, my first, um, artist name. Um, it was given to me by a uh, producer. Um, you know, back in the day you had a lot of production companies, um, and production companies had a whole bunch of artists in them. You know, it would be a whole bunch of artists under this production company. And um, uh, one of the producers would always tell us that um, somebody was coming. You know what I mean? We going, you know, so-and-so was mm -hmm. coming, whatever, you know, A&R was coming. And, you know, you get excited as an artist the first couple of times. But um, after a couple of times of selling us that pipe dream, I was just like, okay, you know, when they get here, I'll be happy to see him. He's like, you acting real nonchalant. And I was like, I mean, I, I'll get excited when I see him. And it just stuck with me. He used to just started calling me that nonchalant because I'm pretty laid back. I'm a laid back person anyway. So that's where it came from. Now, you came out mm -hmm. of D.C. What artists were you listening to out of D.C. at that out time? Out of D.C., I mean, the staple, which is still the staple, I was listening to Go-Go, of course. Um but okay. out of D.C., I was, you know, it was at the time it was Johnny Gill, you know. Um, OK. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, God, his 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 name is is escaping me right now and it'll come back to me. But, um, you know, of, of the younger of the, you know, the people. But of course, the staple. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a person that loves I love, you know, 60, 70, 80s. I'm, I'm stuck in that era. So, I mean, Marvin Gaye is yeah. the staple. Hear My Dear, the album Hear My Dear for Marvin Gaye was on constant and it's still on constant repeat in my in my um in my vehicle. So, yeah. Now, you coming out of mm -hmm. DC. So, what is the process of trying to get exposure so labels are taking I mean, notice? it was pretty much the same um the same process that everybody was having, you know, like, like I said, back then you had a whole bunch of production companies you, and those production companies like black productions where I ended up black productions is, you know, uh, shout out to Lonnie Capen and Bam, the guys that uh, knew the a and Nicole Bernard, who eventually signed me at MCA Universal. But it was, you know, pretty much the same thing is, is getting in, you know, recording and shopping, trying to get meetings with a &Rs and shopping. And then you had your open mics and that sort of thing. So, you know, your, your open mics and people mm -hmm. performing. Open mics would tend to be um, uh, the same people though <laughs> every week. You would go to an open mic and it'll be, 
like the same people doing the same songs, you know, over and over. But it was just, you know, one of those places that you would go. And, you know, the irony of it is, so, you know, some people would come to open mics just to see, you know, who was at the open mics. But during that time, it was pretty much the same thing. Make a record and send it to the label and try to get a meeting. Now, when you got signed to MCA, were you the first rapper out of D.C. that was, like, really well known? Um, Yes, outside of... Now, no, because there were... Now, I was the first rapper to do what I did, like, go gold and, 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 and rapper, go gold, you know, shoot videos in the city and that yeah. sort of thing, major. But, um, like, Black Indian, shout out to Black Indian, he's, he's not with us anymore, who passed away. Black Indian was also signed to Universal. You had um, Section 8 Mob. You had people like Stinky Dink, who, you know, is more on the on the um, rap with Go-Go's bands, but still an MC, a rapper, you know what I mean? So you had a lot of rappers, but I was the first one to do two world tours and the go gold and that sort of thing. And DJ Cool. DJ Cool in his, in his own right, <coughs> not slash hip-hop, really, but cool is, you know, an MC, you know, and, and and we can go into what an MC is, you know what I mean? Um, and, and the difference between yeah. an MC and a rapper and the, the combination of the two. So, um, so yeah. Now, when you recorded at five o'clock, did you know that was the one? You know who chose five o'clock? Daddy-O. Who? Daddy-O chose okay. five o'clock. Um, we were in listening to the album in Nicole's office up at um, MCA Universal, just going through the uh, uh, the, uh, the records. And Daddy O's office was right next to Nicole's. And um, if you could call it, because Daddy O's office was not an office. Like Daddy O's office was more of a vibe spot. It was just you go in, and it was just no, it's no desk. It's you know what I mean. He's in there, total music situation, and. Um, and he came out of his office and came into Nicole's office. And when five o'clock was playing, he was like, "That, that's the one. That's your, that's your single right there." And originally, five o'clock was not called five o'clock, even before it got to, okay. um, to the label. Um, when we finished it, originally five o'clock was called Brother Man, and and we okay. had. Um, uh, I can't think of his name, who was singing on the hook. And it was like, brother, man, come on. I wasn't singing that. It was a, a guy singing that part. And um, just for mm -hmm. some reason, you know, I came in because after writing the song, I just felt like, you know, one that was in the hook. And then I had the experience of being out at five o'clock because during the recording of this record, all of this was recorded before I got my deal. So five o'clock was recorded before mm -hmm. I signed. Um, and I still was working at the post office. I still had to be at, at work at six o'clock. So I was out at five o'clock. And that's where it came from. When okay. I came back in, I was like five o'clock in the morning. Where you going to be outside on the corner? You better get yourself together because it was something that I saw every morning going to work. And that's where it came from. Now, you had a hit with a message. You don't see that too much nowadays. Did the labels, was that ever um, a thing with them back in the days? Where? Hits with messages. Um, As far as what, not, not like, not liking the messages or pushing messages or having an. Or anything like pushing the messages or telling you not to push the, push no, the messages. You know, the great or, thing about, you know, I would say a, a era of, of, um, hip hop 90s specifically, you know, there weren't stipulations mm -hmm. on really what you could say, um, except for if you saying, you know what I mean, fight the power or something, then, you know what I mean, they getting heat because, you know, uh, fight the power, you know, they don't want to hear that sort of thing. But at the same time, yeah. you know, when you have something like, like this, and I think what got, what lulled people with five o'clock one was the, the, the song with the, the music, the beat hit so hard. Yeah. And I would get this from different yeah. people, like the club, the song bang in the club, you know, it come on. And a lot of people yeah. didn't even realize what I was saying until they listened to it on their own. And they were like, oh, wow, you know, she's saying this. But the record hit so hard that, you know, you didn't even catch the message immediately or when you saw me live or something yeah. like that. But as far as pushback from the from the um, the label, no, 
Um, I think they were so, one, I had a lot of support from Nicole Bernard. Shout out to Nicole Bernard, my a &R at the time. Um, I up. had so much support from her and, and, and she was good friends, you know, again, with the production company, Lonnie and Capen um, and Bam. So they went to Howard together. So when that phone call came, she had just gotten her job at MCA. I was one of the first artists that she signed um, at MCA. So she was so happy, one, um, with my lyrical content and the fact that I was writing my own stuff. That was that was another thing, that the fact that I was an actual writer, not, not saying anything about anybody else, but it was refreshing to know that she wouldn't have to bring in writers and, you know what I mean, uh, you know, I got to get somebody to help this girl write her stuff. No, I'm writing everything. And, you know, we're a self-contained machine in D.C. We, we just can return this record into you. And um, and so I think the refreshment of that, you know, of having lyrical content that was for me saying something um, and at the same time, you know, speaking to a different a lot of different things on the record. The the variety on the record was, you know, pleasant and something I think that she felt like, you know, she could definitely move. Now uh, it was, uh, I think, twenty-four on the billboards. Uh, go over five hundred thousand copies. So, what was the feeling like oh, crazy. at that time? Crazy. I mean, to be a new artist and then to have a record, you know what I mean, just to get wings like that and touch so many people and get and you know and and do it for you know the reason outside of uh of just the beat. You know, it's icing on the cake when somebody loves it in the club and then they listen to it and, and fall in love with it all over again because of what you're saying. It was just, you know, it just continues to be a blessing because a lot of people, there are a lot of talented people in the world that never get um, a record that they, you know, they've actually sold over 500,000 gone gold. It's actually close to platinum now. So um, anybody, everybody listen to this, you know, go stream it. Let's, let's stream it up and try to get it to platinum. But um, the feeling is amazing. You know, it's it's amazing and, and a blessing for real to have that plaque to say, you, you know, sold 500,000 copies and now over that. Yeah, everybody can't say that. Yeah. Um. So what was the meaning behind the album title uh, Until the Day? Um, Until the Day was pretty much, um, it's a journey. You really don't know, you know, and that you have, if you want to say arrived at your place until mm -hmm. you've actually arrived and it kind of hits you. But until that day, it's a journey until that day, you're just going to keep stay on this creative journey until that day, you're going to keep learning and growing and experiencing life. And you know what I mean? So until that day, it's, it's, it's a story that, you know, you don't know when it's going to end pretty much. It's going to end when you leave the planet um, in this natural form of a body until that day, keep growing and keep, you know, keep putting good in the world. And for like some of these, these uh, newer generation fans that probably haven't heard the album or whatnot, how would you like describe the sound on that album? Um, eclectic. Um, the record had, you know, a lot of people don't know, you know, that there were records on there. Of course there were records when they're speaking to things like lights and sirens that spoke to police violence and and that sort of thing there were you know yep. but there was also <laughs> there are also records on there about you know love and relationships and you know and like and, and like the title track until the day and and you know so there i would say it was it's an eclectic album um i feel of course i'm biased i felt it was something that you could listen to all the way through and it was unfortunate that you know um, you have reg regime changes within labels and, you know, records don't get pushed that the, the way they're supposed to. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, um, my fan base wasn't able to see all parts of me because I think that would have, would have helped them, you know, not have such a narrow, um, aspect of who nonchalant is, was then and is now they um and it's again five o'clock is a blessing but nobody has the same day every day you know we're all human so um i would say i would i would invite 
you know, people to go back and listen to that full album and, you know, let me know how they feel, especially since the album now is, you know, years, years old and how they feel about it now, listening to it in, in a 2024 for, from a 1996 album. You know, how does that album feel and how does it relate? Because we do know that, you know, Five O'Clock is still a relevant record, unfortunately. It's still relevant to the times. Um, and so um, I would invite people. I would I would love to, to, to find out how people feel about the record today, you know. Yeah, I listened to the whole album earlier today um, and, and I was listening to the record and it was just like, wow, you just can't... Ma- it's almost impossible to put out hit records with messages yeah. like this, you know, that really get that deep, you know, with the details and, and with the message, you know, and you didn't leave no stone unturned, you appreciate know what I'm saying? With the topic, that, I would appreciate say. It. Appreciate it. We got, we got our guy D1 now, out there right now, just ahead. pushing it, you know what I mean? Pushing for these messages and pushing for, you know, the balance and positivity, um, yeah, amongst this other energy, I'm not gonna say it's bad energy, but you know there needs to be a balance. So yeah, but go ahead. I'm gonna veer off to the left or right. Now, after you dropped the single, what what was the energy like on the album? Did the labels put the same energy into like marketing and just pushing That's the, the album? Thing. It wasn't. You know, there were several balls dropped. Like even with um. Five o'clock. Now, you know, back in that time, you lived, the, a record could live, had extra life with remixes. You know what I mean? You come out with the remix, yeah, yeah, that yeah. gives the record a whole nother life and, and, and longevity. And that allows you to, you know what I mean, make the album last even longer. One of the balls that was dropped on five o'clock is um, when the remix came out and there are several, like the KDF remix, you know, the Joe Quick's remix, you got a lot of remixes that came out that are popular to this day. Um, but they put the remix out with the same cover as the single. So when they, it's crazy. Okay. So when they sent the remix out, um, stores got it. They put it in the back because they thinking it's what the, what they already got. The same. Yeah. They put it behind. Yeah. They put it right behind. Yeah. The they didn't, single a lot of time, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, you know what I mean? They put it right behind nothing. That's a yeah, or some goof. of them didn't even put it out. They put it, if they had a, a few of the other yeah. single, you know, singles still out, they never, you know, they just was, you know, so then the label come back. Um, they, somebody realized they dropped the ball. Now they sending out stickers to the, um, the stores, your best buys and all of these places saying, you know, can this, can you put this sticker on here saying it's a remix at that point? It's like, really, you leaving it up to the stores to say, you know what I mean? The clerks, yeah. put the remix. come on. They, it was, it was nuts. So things like that, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, shorten the life of the record. Um, and when you're, when you're depending on, because you know that these remixes are good remixes, you're not per se yeah. ready for until the day the next record to come you're not ready for that even though we shot the video but there's a there's a time you know what i mean so they're over here thinking the remix is about to do this and it's not doing it because people don't know it's a remix now it throws everything off and with that being said now people are leaving labels people nicole left the label and then you bring in a whole new regime you bring in hank shockley and you know all of that you know what happens when that happens now everything is put on hold. I'm not on the shelf, but they're like, okay, non, you keep recording. We're going to do this, do this, but we got to still get, you know, acclimated to what we're going to do, what artists we're going to bring. So it was, it was, it was very frustrating, um, especially as a new artist, because now, you know, you, you missed a window, you missed an opportunity one for again, your um your fan base to know more about you to listen to more of the record yeah. you know what i mean and um it was it was difficult it was a difficult time especially as a new artist you know you're new so you 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 trying to navigate your way through this now was that a common occurrence back in the days where people would goof off like that and I really mean, mess up i mean because you, I mean, the people at the the store, they're gonna see the same label. That all they, oh, they gonna like you said, they don't know no better. They're just gonna put it, stock right. it with the rest and, of the right. The and first your fans singles, are gonna come in. Know? They waiting for a remix. They see, they come to the store and they like, oh, okay, this they ain't get it yet. The remix ain't come out yet, so they not about you know. So yeah, so that situation, 
I mean, I don't know how frequent that was, you know, um, and I'm sure, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of people have stories, you know, stories where, you know, the label is dropping the ball or the label is not acting, you know, in a way that you would want them to handle your record, you know, um, and I'm, I'm sure it happened more, more, more often than, than not, but it's the, it's the recovery, you know, it's the recovery of that, you know, and everything is, it's a chain, you know, that's why they used to call them the machines because these machines work a certain way, you know, this, this, this team is waiting for this team to do this so that they, this team can do that. They're not moving independently. You can't just change gears and be like, all right, well, we're going to do this. No, you have to wait for, you know what I mean? For that, uh, for LA to catch up to New York and, and everybody start, everybody start moving. So, um, so yeah, it was it's a it was a difficult time. Luckily, you know, you know, it, it was a blessing to be able to go in and start and do another album. But again, here we go again with you know um, things not moving in the direction you want them to move in. Um, you know, it's it, it it was it was a crazy time because you think an artist like myself coming off of the type of record that I had five o'clock five o'clock was a monster like five o'clock five o'clock is crazy yeah. now but five o'clock at the time was a monster record and um and it should have been sky's the limit you know it should have been automatic i should have had late mary's on my label you know um um i actually it was a time when i i, I actually flew to la this is um easter it was an easter holiday and i was supposed to be recording with r kelly I fly to LA for oh, for Easter week and R. Kelly, yeah. I'm waiting for R. Kelly to come. R. Kelly is stuck in, I think he was in Atlanta. Then he was like, I'm coming to LA, but it was a whole bunch of confusion. But this is, this is not, this is when you're, you're not really, you're not really planning properly. Like you're not, you're trying to just stick stuff in with this type of monster record. When you got yeah. people like a Mary, a Mary on the label, that should have been a no-brainer record. No, I should have been doing a joint with Mary or something like that. You know, these sorts of things. So it is when, unfortunately, my A&R, Nicole, left. Um, not that, like, she just rolled out or whatever, but you know what I mean? She she moved on to different things, better things for her career. And then people come in with without mm -hmm. the same mindset. Um, not the same passion for you, not the same vision that you have. They want to veer off to the left. Let's try this. You know, it, it happens to a lot of artists and it shouldn't have happened to me realistically with that type of monster record, because until the day, the second single was crazy until the day should have been, come on, until the day should have been nuts. That's Chucky Thompson. You know, this is, you know, come on, this is, it was crazy. Now, back then, how hard was it trying to make it not only out of D.C., but you're a female rapper, too? How was it extra? You know hard? what? It wasn't hard for me, Paul, because of five o'clock. Five o'clock, again, a monster. It preceded me. So before people ever even yeah. met me, they already was in love with the record. So here comes, you know, the person that we are, I, you know, we already love the record. So we just want to meet who made the record. So. I did get though, mm -hmm. what I did get is a lot of people didn't even think I was from DC. A lot of people thought they thought I was okay. from New York. They thought I was from someplace else New York. that they didn't think I was from DC. And when they did, um, when they just had just heard the single before the album dropped um, and I started talking about the album, they would always say, oh, you got go-go on the record. Oh, you from DC. Okay, so you got some go-go on the record. No, I don't have any go go on the record. They'd be like, "Oh, no." I'm like, "No, I'm a hip hop artist. I don't have any, you know, go go on the record." So, yeah. So, now, how do you feel about the state of the female rappers today? Mm, I think, I think it's dope. I think, um, I think it's dope how many there are. Let's put it that way. I think it is extremely crazy mm -hmm. dope how many there are, how many, how people are open to them. And, you know, and there's nobody, it's almost like a, to me now, um, a kinship, like, you know, you, you're going to have that natural battle thing, you know, that's a natural thing. You should be battling. But at the same time, I feel like there's a, a, a level of support for each other, 
you know, rooting for each other. Um, you know, I feel yeah. like that that's happening and, 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 and females are happy for other females to win. Um, so I, I think it's a great time in hip hop for female MCs. Um, do I wish it was a balance of um, dope? And, I, and, and I'm not even going to say that because there are a lot of dope MCs that are winning. And I don't want to say, again, rap and MC, but there are a lot of yeah. um, MCs that um, will make you think a little bit harder. Um, let's put it that way. Um, that are winning, you know, but not to the level of um, a Cardi B or a Nicki like Rhapsody. I mean, yeah, Rhapsody, you know, she's winning. Rhapsody is 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 dope, but she's not Cardi B. You know what I mean? She's yeah, she's not, yeah. she's not making this out. Yeah, she's not yeah, Nikki. Yeah, she's, she's not, not she's yeah. not, and, and I mean by numbers, I mean by numbers, but then you yeah. have a Tierra, a, a, a Tierra Whack, you know what I'm saying? You have and mm. you know, she's definitely making you think, even though what she's saying is making you think for another whole nother reason, her creativity. Her level of creativity is is super dope. So there are a lot of you know female MCs that are you know making you think a little bit harder, having you pay attention to what they say, and you know if you will for nostalgia, rewind it to say, wait a minute, what did she say? She said the such and such the such. You know what I mean? You got to wait like three four lines down to actually connect the dots from the first line. You know, so um, it's it's refreshing to know that they are out there, but um, I wish they were. I wish they were pushed um, a little bit more. You know, I wish the masses, you know, had had um, as much love for them or um, gave them as much attention. Let's put it that way, um, as the others. That would be dope. Yeah, because on the male side, you at least got like Kendrick and Cole. You know, who's been pretty much at the top mm -hmm. of the game. But on the females, all the top females, which they all winning now. Don't get me wrong. The females that are winning, they mm, all winning. Mm, you hear me? I mean, Cardi Cardi got, what, two diamond singles under her belt mm -hmm. that she's a part of? You know, like, they're, yeah, they're Doja winning, Cat. Man. Now, Doja make you think yeah. about, Doja say stuff to make you think, like, wait a minute, what she just say? You know, and, and she fits that that mold, that, that Cardi and Megan mold but at the same time will still make you think. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds with her. But yeah. Now you took a little break and you came back and says you, you DJ and are you still oh, DJ? Absolutely. I got my, um, okay. I got my 1200 shout out to a uh, uh, Grammy winner, uh, DJ Tracy young. Um, uh, okay. Tracy took, we met at, at PGC when I was um, in mid days. Um, at PGC back in the mm -hmm. 90s. And I got my 1200s in 97. Um, and shout out to Tigger too. Shout out to, to Big Tigger down in Atlanta. Um, I used to pester the heck out of Tigger. I used to pester the heck out of DJ Rico. Shout out to Rico, um, Noisemaker Nation here in DC um, about learning how to DJ. And Tracy was like, nah, we gonna, mm -hmm. let's go get some 1200s. And I was like, all right, let's go get some 1200s. So I went up to uh, Chuck Levis Music, Washington Music Center um, after um, getting off the air one day and I bought some 1200s. And um, I, I had them on my dining room table for maybe, man, Paul, I had those jokers on there for maybe three weeks. And I played around with them. I will never forget, it. had the uh, record from Def Jam um one two three four five six seven eight one two three i'm doing that like over and over and over and then after three weeks i packed them up and put them away and i didn't bring my 1200s back out until this is 24 i bought them back out in like 20 2012 20 uh -huh. yeah, like 2012 20 somewhere around in 2014 or something like that i bought them back out and i have such a respect for djs like i always say i play records i'm learning how to dj and um yeah. it's an art you know it's it's a true art to djing you know a lot of people these last couple of years a lot of folks woke up and was like i'm a dj Who's DJing those, you know, Joe Blow that schmo, whatever this, you know, he just went and got some, you know, you know, and um, now they DJ. But um, yep. I work with my 1200s for a long time. 
And then, um, you know, when Serato came around, I went and got the little Serato box with the um, with the vinyl. And then, um, you know, then mm -hmm. I switched up and went and got some DDJs um, when they first came out. And that that didn't feel good. So I went back to my Serato um, with the, with the um, vinyl. And then eventually I got a controller. Um, and still, and still, you know, I like I'm I have a gig uh, this Friday, not yet this Friday coming up. So I do a lot of, um, you know, I do a lot of private parties. Um, I'm an open format. I love open format. I don't like this to color in, in the lines. Um, I like to be all over the place when I DJ. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't do a lot of clubs. I, I will do a club, but I don't really do a lot of clubs. I do a lot of corporate events or private parties, um, things like that, marathons and that sort of thing. But I, I'm so long winded. Let me stop talking. I'm just running at the mic. <laughs> Do you think like most musicians need to try to find like a second thing as well? I think um just to have something to fall back on. I mean, sometimes I feel and... like you know the world is so so creative. So for me, it was a natural transition for DJ to, to learn how to DJ uh -huh. because just like engineering, I mean I, I, I was running a studio I um for a while. Um, I eventually put a whole, you know what I mean? 32 channel board in my house and, and, and learned how to do that. Now, am I young guru on the boards? Absolutely not. But, <laughs> you know, but, you know, standing in there and watching the engineer touch buttons, I want to know why you touching that. And I couldn't stand when somebody yeah. would say, oh no, I ain't do nothing. It ain't do nothing. Well, why you keep touching it? So <laughs> it wasn't until, you know, I started engineering that I realized that, you know, I just be touching the buttons too. You don't do anything. It's also when you're DJing, when you're DJing, you just naturally, you know, you mean you touching it, but you might not be doing anything at that point in time. So I think it's yeah. important, um, you know, as a creative person um, that you have other outlets. Now, everybody's not going to want a DJ or everybody's not going to want to do whatever, whatever. Some people just want to write songs or rap or sing. That's all they want to do. But I do believe that, you know, um, it's a natural thing for you to veer off into another creative, you know, another creative realm. Right now, for me, something else that I have veered off on is printing, is screen printing. Okay. And that... Yeah. You know, I'm DJing, but like right now I have this. I don't know if you could, Paul, look at this shirt. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? this. Uh, yeah, you see yeah. That is? Uh, yeah, looks that's like who it is. So um, I did this sweatshirt, but how I started screen printing is my nephew Christopher um, passed away from epilepsy. And I was um, involved oh, in, shout out to Chris Avion, because he was a dope MC, incredible MC. And um, and so I started having um, a, a, a concert for him and I would do T-shirts and that was getting expensive, like, you know, getting his T-shirts printed. And I yeah. was just looked into printing and pr the print world is a whole there's a level of creativity in printing in so many ways that you print specifically with screen printing for me. Um, so I just started yeah. studying it, studying screen printing. And eventually I opened up a screen printing company called red panda printing but there's so many you know those dots you know connect because that's merch for artists you know what i'm saying so yep. i think it's important that it doesn't even have to be the beautiful thing like like i was saying i wasn't saying but and i'll try to wrap it up right now there are no lines you know i think it's great that people are able to without being ridiculed able to go into veer into other things that they want to do look at bum b who would have in 95 if you would have said Bumby is flipping burgers? You know what I mean? No, Bumby got a whole burger come trill burgers that's winning. But if you would have yeah. had him, you know, trying to do a burger, dude, that's what it would have been. That's what they would have been like, Bumby flipping burgers. No, Bumby got a whole a uh, 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 burger company that's winning. Or you got, you know what I mean? You got you know, the locks with their their juicing. Yeah, I'm about to say yeah, that. Yeah, got, got juice juices, in it. You yeah. got, you know, Jermaine Dupree with his ice cream. The the one Master P with cereal and everything else he can get his hands oh, yeah. on. So it's just, um, it's a beautiful thing now to be able to just veer off in whatever, you know, direction you want to go in. 
business wise or creative. It's not, it's, it's, you know, you're not going to be looked upon as, oh, wow, you, you doing that? No, it's going to be like, wow, you doing that. Now, you also did a song um, on the Dangerous Ground mm. soundtrack with MC Light, Yo-Yo, and Bahamadia. What was that like? That was dope. Um, we didn't record together, though. Unfortunately, okay. we all, at least I didn't, you know, um, we all sent our record in, sent our vocals in. I recorded in one particular place, sent the vocals in. It would have been dope to do that, you know, all together. But um, we weren't all in the same place um, to do that record. But I would say... Um, like my girl, shout out to my girl, Yo-Yo. Uh, we did a record together, uh, not together, but for an artist named Sandra St. Vic. And um, she was a, a, okay. a singer. And uh, we did vocals on that. And it was dope. This is back, you know, of course, years ago. And I remember we had a show in um, in New York and um, Central Park. And Yo-Yo and I were able mm -hmm. to perform in Central Park with Sandra St. Vic. And, that, that, you know, that was, you know, it's a dope time to be able to collaborate with, you know, artists. Um, but on that's on the dangerous grounds, we weren't we weren't all in the same place. No. Now, uh, have you recorded any new music absolutely. lately or yep, plan absolutely. on recording yep. any new music? So um, I just um, there's a, a, a artist named uh, Night Train 357. And uh, he just dropped okay. a record last month uh, called The Check. So I did a, a verse for him, dope MC, incredible human being, but a dope MC. Um, I just dropped, um, uh, uh, what's the record? God, dog, just skip my mind that quick. And this has been some time ago, a um, um, couple of months. This is, well, actually, this has been some months ago. Um, uh, oh, my God. I'm looking right at his face. He was just with... Um, just with Jazzy Jeff for his uh, that that uh, um, weekend that he had with all the creatives. I'm looking at his face, but we did a record. But um, but yeah, so but I'm gearing up to drop like a project of my own. Um, okay, yeah, I'm gearing up. up. I got I got joints. I have you know several joints um, that I have, uh, and uh, I'm ready to drop. Uh, I think it's about, I got about five so far. I'm going to do a short project. It's not going to be a long project, but something short, you know, um, in the new year. So I'm gearing, I am gearing up for that. I am gearing up for it. Well, be sure to, uh, you know, I do the music reviews on Saturdays. So, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Paul. I got to get your, I got to get your opinion. So for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, before we let you go, anybody you want to shout um, out? Yeah, I actually, I definitely would like definitely shout out the, the, my 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 BFF and and the person that keeps uh, the train moving, uh, uh, Donna Management. Um, I want to shout out, you know, the uh, my RPM family. Um, RPM. I, I'll talk a little bit about RPM, but people record pool mixes is an event that I had. Uh, the last okay. one was in 2022, and uh, I know a lot of people are a lot of people have been. You know, asking me, Nan, are you going to do that again? And just, just the heads up, I will be doing it again, 2025. We are gearing up, so that announcement will be coming very, very soon. And um, you know, just shout out, shout out to um, to you know everybody that continues to support me, continues to support um, you know hip hop and, and and just music in general. Um, I don't know what side of the fence people are on right now, but I would urge everybody, definitely, if you can hear my voice, get out and vote. We are in an election year. So definitely, you know, whatever, whoever your candidate it is, if it ain't Kamala, I'll pray for you. But um, yeah, but shout out to, to you know, my, my Kamala, my Kamala and Walls folks. And, um, you know, let's just get out and vote and, 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 and you know, use your power. And um, just check for me. Check for me. Thank you to everybody that continues to support me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Paul. I really appreciate it, you know, and um, yeah. Yeah. Sure thing. Well, I appreciate you taking out the time. You're a friend of the show now. You can come back sure. on anytime. Um, I got your management's contact. Uh, they got mine, so I I'll definitely keep in touch, I appreciate man. it. I hope so. Let's stay close. All right. You, you too. have a nice peace, night. Peace. All right, peace. Well, there you go, another banger. Um, that was nonchalant. Five o'clock in the morning. Where you gonna be? Outside on the corner. 
7 p.m. Eastern time, where you're going to be on a Friday night, none other than live for Vietnam. Uh, don't forget we got music reviews tomorrow at, um, I don't know what time I'm going to go on. I'm trying to find a perfect time to do music reviews that are good enough for people overseas as well because we get a lot of submissions overseas, and they're like five hours ahead of us, sometimes six, seven hours ahead of us. But, um, yeah, uh, you heard Nonchalant there. She's going to have some new music out soon. Hopefully she'll be sending something uh, so we can review it on Live for Vietnam. She had a really, really recognizable single, hit single back in the days, uh, top 25 Billboard charts, uh, over 500,000 copies sold in a single. But it definitely looks like the label dropped the ball, as you heard um, on the marketing, where they sent the... Uh, they put the remix out with the same cover, which is a no-no. You got to put a whole different cover for the remix so people don't put it, you know, with the original and whatnot. But, um, yeah, for y'all, y'all don't know that song, go uh, Google Nonchalant 5 O'Clock. Um, definitely was a big record back in the days. Definitely one of the most memorable uh, singles in hip-hop in my opinion. And I got to figure out why my Facebook was uh, event was on private, why it wasn't on public for some reason. But, um, you know, we're going to figure it out. I just switched from StreamYard to Restream. If I have to, we'll just download the uh, interview and re-upload it as well. Again, I want to thank Nonchalant for taking time out. Next week, we got uh, CMG from the Conscious Daughters. So that's going to be back-to-back weeks where we got two females from hip-hop from the 90s uh, doing interviews. And I'm going to try to uh, probably, I think, the Friday after, we're probably going to have Bogey Black on. Bogey wanted to have a uh, do an interview a lot for Vietnam, so we're going to probably have Bogey Black on uh, the third Friday of this month, and we'll see who we can get on for the fourth Friday. And also, don't forget about the Paul Pickett podcast. Um, I got an interview I'm doing Sunday with uh james lights out lily out of the uk and fights for the bkfc but check out my last interview with um anthony the devil's advocate yost i just did one with uh matthew spider morton and also go check out paul pickett podcast now available on millions.co as long as well as the new little apparel merch you see the t-shirt right here we got new little apparel you can get that on millions.co as well. We got other um, this cert designs for all you dog lovers. We got the pit bulls, the Dobermans, and whatnot. And don't forget, submit your music at live for Vietnam at gmail.com. Appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Blue, Johnny Dozier, my man. Um, Miss Eyes, appreciate you tuning in. Send me some more music. Blue, send me some more music at live for Vietnam at gmail.com. MP3 only um let's see uh what else what what's new what's new um yeah just, that's it man go check out paul picker podcast keep following live for vietnam friday 7 p.m eastern time with interviews music reviews on saturdays um i might start going live on sundays and just do a sports wrap up you know what i'm saying and whatnot, especially why the NFL is getting into, you know, their Sunday games and whatnot. Appreciate everybody tuning in on YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram. Don't forget the audio versions of both my podcasts available on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much, much more. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Peace, and I'm out. <laughs>